All the constituent elements of a rite have necessarily a symbolic sense, while on the other hand the symbol itself, in its commonest application, as a support for meditation, is destined essentially to give results which are exactly comparable to results of rites. The quote here is from René Ganon, and it's who we're going to talk about today. This is not going to be an autobiography, this is going to be and talk about one of the things Ganon usually talks about quite a lot, which is rituals or rites. Now, rituals for Ganon is very important, and it brings up something new within a traditional school and a critique of modernism. Rituals have many layers to it, and it can be very different depending on what type of ritual it is. But one of the more common rituals is something of a transition ritual. Now, transition rituals is usually what you will see with funerals, for example, or when you get into a group, you do something to be... To, to state that you have entered one space and into a new one. Now, for example, universities are filled with this sort of rituals, and it's sort of part of the entire environment of a university. Now, you might have been to university, and if you have, in the first weeks of university, you usually do something called like novish or some part of a ritual to celebrate that now you're in a university, you have entered a new stage in your life. And a ritual here is very important. How these rituals are based upon is depending on the culture, tradition, and language or symbols of that university and of the people of surrounding that university. The thing is, I, per se, never really liked these rituals, but to argue that I've never done them is not true. For example, a ritual can be going out drinking. That's an interesting ritual after you've done a test. Now, one can talk about why these rituals are a thing, and something can on, in certain senses, would argue as well, is that rituals gives us some sort of a meaning. It, it fills up a void. Now, Ganon was very much into the idea of Freemasonry. Now, a Freemason lifestyle, and sort of the life that you bring, you have about, if I'm correct, it's up to 20 years up until you're in, in, in the final stages, usually, and then it can even be pushed further. The entire point of a life within Freemasonry is that your life is set. Set goals and set rituals they will follow, which will give you meaning and something to look forward to, something to fight for, something to continue going. So he believed that in a sort of a society, we need these type of ritualistic behaviors and rit rituals to upkeep some sort of uh, away from nihilism and what modernism will bring. So part of your life should always be sort of rituals that you look forward to. And in a way, that's what we have created. For example, you go to school, then you get married, and then you have children, and then you get a car, and yada, 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 up until the day you die. These are rituals and traditions that you should upkeep. Now we talk about more the materialistic ideas of a ritual, but ritual usually also comes in idea of symbolism and language. Ganon pointed out that most rituals or traditions of rituals usually doesn't come from something we understand really. It's something that's been there for a very long time. It has an inherent meaning, inherent gesturing to something previous and something that isn't really set. Like no one came and said, all right, let's do this. And then all the rituals of your life is set. It never happened. It's sort of naturally evolved and grown into who you are. And in a sense, your identity can be the rituals that you will do throughout your entire life. And this will differ depending on what history and what language and what symbols you use. René was a perennialist. He believed that most knowledge, divine knowledge that is, comes from a source in the past, but it's all part of the same cake. Now, Mormons, for example, they are also perennialists, which is really interesting. So, during a conversation when I had with a Mormon a while ago, he described Mormonism as the full cake, while many other ideas, certain Christian group, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, you name it, have slices of cake that God has given them. But it's all the same cake, but it's just different slices of a cake. But what Mormonism done is they found the entire cake, they found the perennial source of truth, and that's exactly what Ganon also believes. He believes that every idea and knowledge has some sort of a link to the same thing, the same source, usually the divine source, or it's sort of a non-human source. And if we go further back, we usually see commonalities within religion, and it can be based upon this divine source. 
Now, it doesn't have to be divine per se, but it can be the source that it comes from the same group. And we talked about this before, for example, the Indo-European expansion, that I actually, unironically, you know, someone is going to criticize me for this, believe that the Veda scriptures actually have a genetic connection to the Europeans, because they come from the same group. Because I see a lot of similarities in Plato's Republic that I see in the Veda scriptures. But this is not things we know yet. So he would argue against it. He would argue, no, this can't be metaphysical truth. You're trying to explain it through naturalistic theories that are not true. For example, he says here, Thus every language, be it spoken or written, is truly a body of symbols. And it's precisely for this reason that in spite of all the naturalistic theories meant to explain it, language can never be either a more or less artificial human creation or a mere project for man's individual faculties. And here is where traditional school usually comes into it. That tradition, symbols, rites, rituals, and the rest all have a non-individualistic source. It's not one man, it's not an artificial man, it's not artificial human creation. It's something more organic. So to remove tradition, language, and symbols from a group is not just removing an individualistic act of a symbol, but the history culture, the unwritten culture of a people. And here is where rights, in his opinion, is so important, because rights is where symbols coexist within human. Now, why do we bury our dead? Let's take an example for that. Sure, you can bring it back. There might be tradition somewhere back in line. We did this. Yeah, but it's such a non-human creation. It may, maybe it was someone back in the day who actually created that. Throughout the times, it has become an organic creation, an organic symbol of something that these people do. But they are organic, and that's why one should follow it. One should always follow organic symbols. Because that's, in a way, what you are. You can try to rationalize everything, or deconstruct every symbol that you see, to find some sort of metaphysical meaning to everything. But you can't, first of all we're not there in the state that we can understand this. And if you do, only thing you're doing is destroying parts of your tradition. And without tradition, you have the materialistic self-destructiveness. And without this tradition, you don't have anything more than materialistic dis destructiveness that's in the end of the day is gonna destroy any sort of part that was you. Because what is everything if you deconstruct it? Again, it might be said that rites are symbols put into action. That every ritual gesture is a symbol acted. This is only another way of saying the same thing. But putting rather more specifically in evidence the characteristics of a rite, that like every action, is something which is necessarily performed in time. While a symbol as such may be considered from a timeless standpoint, in this sense, it's possible to speak of a certain preeminence of a symbol of a rite, but rites and symbols fundamentally are two aspects of a single reality. And this is none other than the correspondence, which binds together all degrees in universal existence. In such a way, by its means, our human state can enter into communication with the higher state of being.